inside southern Scotland. Under tow, the world's first large steel gravity support structure for offshore oil. A 42,000 ton giant. In a project managed by Britain's Phillips Petroleum, the structure was built for an international partnership of energy companies. Phillips Petroleum of the United States, Kina Exploration of Belgium, Ogip, headquartered in Italy, and a group of three British utilities. Its destination is the marine oil field in the North Sea. This journey's beginning marks the climax of another odyssey, the planning and building of this complex steel colossus on a man-made island off Scotland's western coast. This is the Hunterston story, profile of a giant. Hunterston Graving Dock near Glasgow. Its base 40 feet below low tide. Here the huge structure would be built and then with the graving dock flooded, floated out to sea. And here CBI faced the project's first major challenge, preparing this site for the vast effort ahead. The graving dock had to be enlarged to accommodate the huge marine substructure. Support systems and facilities for the dock and assembly yard had to be planned, designed, constructed. The scale of this undertaking reflected the scope of the project itself. The marine production platform incorporates design concepts unique in this combination and size. After a large steel template was pinned to the seabed, 16 wells were drilled through it as work on the substructure began at Hunterston. At the same time, the platform's production deck began to take shape in northern Scotland. Template, deck, and substructure were to be joined together at the North Sea site. The project design, developed by Technomare of Italy, called for a substructure of enormous dimension and great complexity. Its three giant legs provide not only support, but also storage for 650,000 barrels of oil, allowing nine days of production before it becomes necessary to load the oil onto tankers. Insurance against shipping delays caused by the rugged North Sea weather. Building this substructure was the responsibility of CBI's Ayrshire Marine Operation at Hunterston, beginning with the selection of an experienced production team and the preparation of the site itself. Support buildings were erected and foundations prepared to hold the heavy structure and the special lifting equipment needed to construct it. When this site development is completed, new buildings will be standing. An assembly yard laid out and equipped, concrete work and pilings in place to support the extreme weights involved. Hunterston will have been transformed to meet the needs of the project. To receive the large components and equipment the project required, a new dock was built adjacent to the assembly yard. Three derricks were shipped from the United States to accomplish the high, heavy lifts necessary. Each tower-mounted derrick was capable of lifting 500 tons, almost 400 feet above the base of the graving dock. 450-ton cranes were also sent to the site to move components from assembly yard and dock to the structure, the mechanical muscle to handle thousands of tons of precisely engineered steel. Hunterston was prepared for the job ahead, a project as challenging for its complexity as for its size. A massive framework, a network of complicated nodes and angled braces would rise with the structure's three legs, linking them together. Computer studies help schedule the construction process to assure a coordinated flow of work and material at the site. Sections were fabricated in the large assembly yard next to the graving dock, while steel plate and assembled components were shipped from more than 20 European suppliers.
Managing the logistics of this construction effort was the second major challenge of Hunterston. Sections completed in the yard were passed by crane to the structure and then lowered into precise position for the welding teams. At the same time, more complex sections were fabricated in the supplier plants and shipped to the site. CBI personnel in each plant assured quality control, dimensional accuracy, and on-time delivery to Hunterston. As the marine substructure took shape, the on- and off-site fabrication effort was coordinated with the assembly process through a computer hookup between Hunterston and CBI's mainframe at its U.S. headquarters. Like a giant three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle, the pieces of the structure were put into place, each in the proper sequence, each to a precise tolerance. Steel sections were preheated and welded under carefully controlled conditions. Not a simple task on Hunterston's windswept site. Specially designed weather hoods were placed over each section to shield workers and steel from the rugged Scottish climate. Maintaining precise quality standards under widely variable weather conditions was the third challenge of Hunterston. The fourth challenge was maintaining productive relations with a labor force of more than 1,200 workers employed on the site. Daily planning meetings and carefully structured union agreements kept the project moving. And while some work stoppages were encountered, the success of CBI's effort can be measured in the fact that many of the Scottish workers trained at Hunterston have gone on to become full-time employees now working on CBI projects around the world. Of all the vast resources focused on the Hunterston project, its ultimate success still hinged on the motivation and skill of the workmen who built the substructure. Hunterston was an international effort from its inception. Project manpower included management personnel drawn from CBI subsidiaries around the world a locally trained supervisory and labor force, and fabrication teams in supplier factories across the European continent. The challenges of Hunterston, severe weather, a volatile labor climate, extensive site preparation, complex logistics, The challenges were met, and month by month, the profile of a giant grew larger in the Graven Dock. As work progressed, complicated assembly procedures were visualized on a detailed model, rehearsing the full-scale construction process before components arrived from the subcontractors. node sections for the support tower were delivered at the precise time in the assembly schedule to be positioned smoothly into the growing substructure.
The three massive legs, each 85 feet in diameter, were constructed of individual steel rings fabricated in the assembly yard. Each ring was lowered to the top of the previous one and welded into place. 26 rings to each leg. The substructure's outer skin grew like tires being stacked on top of one another. While the structure's shell was erected, the inner storage vessels and support systems were constructed within its cylindrical wall. Hemispherical heads formed enclosed vessels within each of the legs, providing storage space for oil and the buoyancy needed for float out. With steel almost five inches thick in some sections, the legs were welded into a cohesive structure that had the strength to withstand the battering of the turbulent North Sea. As the three legs grew, the support tower that tied the entire structure together grew along with them in a carefully coordinated vertical assembly. in the assembly yard capped each of the inner vessels. reaching higher against the sky. The challenge of precise fit-up between the many angled node sections is clearly revealed. piece, the tower derricks raised each course higher as the giant grew in the grading dock. After almost two years of on-site work, the top heads of the substructure legs were lowered into place for welding. Almost 400 feet high, with a weight of over 42,000 tons before ballasting, the giant statistics were impressive. But equally impressive was the delicate touch with which this giant was assembled. By the time the tower's tubular, above-the-waterline sections were hoisted into place, many thousands of wells had been completed, hundreds of components had been fabricated, and through every stage of construction, careful quality control procedures maintained stringent standards. The Marlene platform is designed for a productive life of 20 years and constant testing assured that every design specification was met or exceeded in the standing structure. 
These quality checks and rechecks confirm the integrity of every component, every weld, every fabricated assembly. With the substructure's three legs and support tower completed, one last job remained the most complex component. The temporary deck which controlled the structure during float out had to be installed. This was the heaviest single lift on the project with a weight of 500 tons. With all its size, the deck is only one of many large assemblies on the marine substructure. Although the dimensions are huge, Tolerances are measured in fractions of an inch. As locking pins secured the platform, the giant was completed, and final preparations for the float out began. As seawater poured into the graving dock, the float out phase of the project began. Flooding took seven days. Then the wall holding back the waters of the Clyde was removed. Every bucket load of material would later be replaced. A condition of the contract was restoring the site to its original condition after the project's completion. cleared a deep water access channel into the climb. In all, nearly 600,000 cubic yards of material were removed to allow the floating structure to pass through. It was time for the giant to move. The dedication ceremony preceding the float out of the marine substructure also marked a milestone in the construction of offshore platforms. The Hunterston project demonstrated the feasibility of many new engineering and design concepts. Nothing like it had ever been built before. Huge storage tanks in the structure's legs were filled with compressed air at two atmospheres pressure. Working in concert with six winches positioned around the dock, two tugs eased the giant out of the graving dock and into open water. Studded with cathodic anodes, the structure was protected against the corrosive environment of its future home on the ocean floor. With less than three feet of bottom clearance, the giant moved into the climb.
section of each channel, the substructure was ballasted down with seawater for added stability. And other tugs joined the tow, bound for Scotland's northwest coast, where the production platform would be installed. With the float out, CBI's responsibility ended. But as this enormous structure begins its productive life on the floor of the North Sea, the Hunterston story will continue. The profile of a giant.